In this session we're going to be looking at the Pixel Spread module which is part of the FlameFX toolset available in Autodesk Smoke. To find the Pixel Spread tool simply switch to the FlameFX module through the main interface pop-up and the button should be located near the middle of the interface. Just for your extra information the Pixel Spread is also available as a node in the modular keyer. Pixel spreading allows you to control the movement of pixels on the edge of a supplied mat or alpha channel. In other words you can expand pixels outward from the mat as well as contract them into the mat. This really depends on what you're trying to achieve. In real world terms pixel spreading has quite a few uses and I'm going to highlight 4 examples which you would use in everyday work. Let's start off with the first example which is dealing with edges on a key. Select the Pixel Spread option in the menu and set the pop-up to use the Front Back Matte option. Using the red cursor select the front image, then with the green cursor select the background and finally with the blue cursor select the Alpha or Matte clip. Click anywhere with the white cursor on the desktop to enter into the Pixel Spread module. Let's zoom up into the image by holding down the Control hotkey on the keyboard and pressing the Home button located to the right of the interface. In the Pixel Spread module you have access to 4 algorithms which control the way in which pixels spread out over the images. The spread type we will examine is Parallax. Parallax is fantastic for dealing with edge issues on keys. It allows you to approach edge issues in a totally different way from which you may be used to. Normally with bad edges we tend to shrink or even attempt to colour correct them but sometimes this is not enough. To illustrate this to you I will switch the result output from spread only to result. This will show us the composited result of our loaded images. I will set the parallax amount to 0 for a moment and zoom into the talent's arm to have a closer look at those edges. Now with pixel spread set to 0 you can see that we have an edge problem. This is a classic scenario. The bright edges I was talking about earlier are clearly visible. Now watch what happens when I start to increase the parallax amount. How cool is that? The pixels on the edge of the mat have grown to cover the highlighted edges. They are spread from the correct angle so that all the colors line up. If I pan over to her face and start adjusting the amount again you can see that the spreading is nicely dealing with the fine hair detail as well. If you want to see exactly what is happening you can switch to the spread result output and by adjusting the parallax amount you can see how the pixels are spreading out from the mat. Going back to the result output I will set the parallax back to a value of 2 and I'll press the home button to zoom out. So you can definitely see the difference and this can certainly help you out of some difficult situations. You also have a column called edges. This refers to the width of the spreading pixels and it works in tandem with the value set in the spreading type amount. This will become more evident in our next example. I'll exit the pixel spread module back to the desktop and now we'll have a look at the next spread type. This time I will select the pixel spread button and set the blue pop-up to front mat. With the red cursor I'll pick the cat on the green screen as my front. The mat or alpha I have is a travelling mask that we will use as well. Remember to click the white cursor on the desktop to enter into the module. I'll just reset the module and I'll set the spread type to stretch. Stretch is similar to parallax in the way it spreads pixels but the mathematics underneath causes different results to occur. You can see this in this example when increasing the stretch amount the pixels grow outward from the alpha in a uniform direction. Interesting effect so far. However if we start increasing the edge width of the distortion you can see that it starts to create a warping effect. Now remember that the alpha movement is based on the front plate. So if I scrub the time bar you get a warping effect. Very easily you can see we have created a really good and accurate pixel based warp. To understand this the white parts of the mat are being used as the basis for the warping. So just a couple of hints here. The lower the width value for the edges combined with the stretch amount results in a pronounced dragging effect. But using a higher value for the edge width causes the warping effects. One other item to point out is the spread mode. 
it is set to expansion so the pixels expand outwards. Switching to contraction creates the inverse result. I think I'll ease off the stretch amount. Much better. Poor kitty cat. Right, next example. Back to the desktop, we will choose pixel spread again and I will set the blue pop-up to front, back and mat. This time we will bring a CGI fish which is pre-multiplied and this will be composited over a background. I will reset the pixel spread again and set the result output to result and the spread type to interpolate. Now one of the most common issues with pre-multiplied CGI is that any transparent or semi-transparent parts of the alpha channel are multiplied against the black color values. This means that the color edges always appear to be darker when composited on top of a background. Normally we might have to divide the pixel values by the alpha channel to correct this but it also gives some strange results. Hopefully the pixel spread will sort out some of these common issues you may encounter when compositing with CGI and pre-multiplied graphics. Firstly, there's a nice little button in the interface to tell pixel spread that the material is pre-multiplied. So it already starts to look better but we can do way more with the color values that are working through the transparent fins of the fish. I'll switch back to the spread only view to see what the pixel spread is doing. In this view, pixel spread is spreading the color of the edges outward to fill up the black frame. Ideally this means that the edge blending is even better. But because this is pixel spread, we can increase the color interpolation as well as the width of the pixels taking into account for the blending. So when switching back to the result output, you can see that by adjusting the edges as well as the color interpolation, I have total control as to how the CG is blending against the background in those semi-transparent and transparent areas. For those of you who do this type of work, you know what I'm talking about. Finally, coming back to the desktop, our last example is slightly different. Here I have a still frame as a front and a vector map as a vector input. The vector map consists of red and green values which will be used to precisely warp pixels of our front image. So I'll select the pixel spread one more time and set the blue pop-up to front and vector map. The red cursor is the front and the second cursor is the vector map. With the white cursor, click on the desktop to one more time enter into pixel spread. I'll reset everything and switch the spread type to vector warp. You can see that the spread mode is off because the vector map will handle the pixel spreading. You can see that if I scrub the time bar with the default value, the vector map is warping the images. The values precisely are matched against the movement of the red and green channels in the vector map. We can increase the distortion by adjusting the distance slider in either positive or negative values for a more dramatic effect. So you can see that this mode is accurately spreading the pixels on a vector pass. This vector pass could be generated through CGI or you could simply make one using the gradient tool and other flame effects deform tools in Smoke. Some other options you have is controlling the distortion overlap as well as influencing how much of the red, green and blue values will have over the horizontal and vertical pixel spreading. Finally, the spread blur slider blurs the pixels along the direction of the spread. It is really clean and different to a regular Gaussian blur. To sum up, I know that I've mentioned some of the uses of pixel spread but there are lots more. You could use pixel spread to assist with wire removal on a green or blue screen plate. Or you could use the interpolate mode to do some funky visual effects. The topic of pixel spreading is quite broad and it's lots of fun too.